This is Twit. The core conceit of drafts is it wants to be the place that you start any text you put into your devices. An easy way to launch and type um, or dictate or whatever, just sort of capture all those tidbits, ideas, thoughts, tasks, messages, whatever they may be. So rather than having to jump around between different apps and go find the new button in notes or, uh, you know, go over to messages and find the right conversation to have to type something. You just want to launch something and start typing. And that was the original concept of drafts. Um, and over the years, it's become a lot more than that. Um, and I think other than just a capture tool, it's a great editor that gives you a customizable, friendly place to do all your text editing on your device. And it's an automation tool that lets you do stuff with that text that you captured. Uh, so there's an action framework that lets you send messages, email, save to files in Dropbox or Google Drive, uh, you know. And also <laughs> over the years, it's gotten more and more advanced and there's very geeky tools for scripting and manipulating text uh, and stuff like that that just makes it sort of your all-in-one stop you know shop for text on ios and now on the mac uh, as well yeah i was really excited and let's not forget the apple watch because that's to me that's part, a big part of my workflow as soon as i realized i could uh actually start a draft and you have a complication which is really nice on the watch using typing or better dictation this is another draft that i'm creating on my watch and then as soon as I'm done, it all automatically goes into drafts is really, for me, a great tool because I want to, the idea for me for drafts, I, it's interesting that you see this as a writing tool. So people would be, be writing like blog posts or, or, or novels and stuff in drafts. You see, you see people doing that? Yeah. Or, you know, drafting tweets, uh, yeah. you know, it's a kind of thing you can avoid your inbox or avoid your social media stream, but still be able to publish something, just launch it in type. Yeah, this is this is kind of the um, whole, to me, and I know this is why Merlin Mann, who's one of your your biggest fans, uh, advocates it. It's, it's really a getting things done, the inbox and getting things done. A, a trusted place you could just, as soon as something comes to mind, dump so that you can let go of it and then process it later. And, and that's really the key for me on this. So uh, I'll I can save you a tap on the Apple Watch there. Would uh, you please? There's a, there's a setting in in the app on your um, <laughs> on the phone. iPhone. Yeah. You have to do it, it on the phone, not on the iPad. Dictating immediately, yeah. right? Yeah. If yeah. you go to settings in the app on your phone, go to the Apple Watch section, there's an auto capture setting. And that means when you launch it from the complication, it goes straight to dictation. Ah, you don't have that's to, nice. Because that's, 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 that's what I generally want. In fact, that's how I used to have it, and I guess I, I changed it or it changed itself at some point because um, I remember last week or the week before, Meg and I were talking about drafts, and she taught me, told me, oh, yeah, you could just enter it on the, on the mm -hmm. watch. I said, no, you, it's just for recording. So I guess for years I just had used it as a recording uh, device. But as you can see, the one I created on my watch is, is already, uh, here it is on my uh, iPad, and it'll be on my Mac as well now thanks to your latest pro version which is really great and then what's cool is you you go over if you swipe in from the right you can have a lot of different ways to process it you can you can and as you pointed out you can program these which is really cool uh, to do a whole variety of things you have a very large set of uh, operations available uh, on the web on your website those are using the url scheme is that how you do these things these actions uh, it's a combination. Uh, there's integrations with third-party apps using URL schemes, uh, X callback URL. I, I actually wrote the X callback URL spec, and that was part of developing support for integration between apps. Nice. Mostly to enable this sort of stuff for drafts, but also there's direct integration with a lot of web services and online APIs. Um, yeah, there's a so lot there's of there's no a need lot of to have apps installed. Yeah, there's a, in fact I have to regularly go to actions.getdrafts.com because there's always new stuff which is really fun. And I'm and and you know, here's one get bible verse. Here's one uh in French, linky to Twitter to Mastodon or Twitter and Mastodon. Uh Weibo. So you have users all over the world. And that's really cool. And a lot of third-party people creating these things, which is really neat. 
Absolutely. We have a, the community link over there is a great forum uh, where users help each other out with uh, um, different actions and, you know, ideas for things to do with the app. It's great having a community like that around the tool. It's brave of you because I'll be honest, uh, iOS tends to be on rails. iOS apps tend to be on rails. They do this thing and you do it and there's not because the UI is not well defined. You know, it's different in every app. So apps tend to be very focused and straightforward. Very few open-ended, truly open-ended apps. And I have never seen a more open-ended app in, on any platform than drafts. I mean, it presents you with a blank screen and says, what do you want to do? You know, it's, like, it's as bad as Emacs. <laughs> <laughs> well, ultimately, when the idea was you capture the text and then you do something with it. Right. But the problem is everybody who uses it wants to do something different right. with the text. So it just kept growing. And most people probably have six to 10 actions set up that they use regularly. But for everybody, that's something different. Um, so there's a lot of range of support for things that just to beat everyone's needs. So, so, uh, one of the things we're going to hear, uh, we expect to hear is about Marzipan and, um, we're talking about next week, yeah, uh, WWDC, WWDC yeah. um, that, that you'll be able to develop iOS apps that will work on the Mac. Now you already developed you, a, a Mac app. Was there some part of you that wanted to wait to see if that would happen or why, why develop it, um, on both platforms? Well, I'm kind of on a multi-year plan. So I had been working on moving it to the Mac for several years before there was even rumors about Marzipan. So I kept moving forward with that. And I do think it's going to be a transition. And there may be a time that I, I ship the Mac version as a Marzipan version, that it it's good enough and that's what, what people want. But for the time being... You got to remember that even when we get this in the fall, it's going to be something that requires the new version of Mac OS. Um, the timeframes for Mac are much longer than iOS. People don't install the new OS immediately, or they have an eight-year-old iMac that doesn't support the new OS on their desk. And, uh, you know, they're not going to be able to take advantage of Marzipan, and I'd be limiting myself in a lot of ways. And it remains to be seen uh, how that'll work out in time. And I'm sure Marzipan will be good and I'm sure it'll get better, but uh, I, I'm not in a rush to jump on the, that technology bandwagon. And I think we're really, a lot of the technological information has sort of been leaked, uh, but we don't know much about the business side of it, which is another aspect of what I do. I'm trying to make a living at this and we haven't heard anything from Apple about things like you know, are there going to be universal subscriptions and pricing models? Because right now the Mac App Store and the iOS App Store are totally separate. You know, there's no way to share a purchase between the two or, you know, those sorts of things we don't know the answers to yet. So we'll have to wait and see. I, I kind of like, uh, like it that you are in a way the test bed for all new Apple technologies. Like if there's a new Apple technology like Marzipan, it's going to be somehow incorporated into drafts. It's, I mean, no matter, you must use every kit that Apple offers, except maybe AR kit. Although I wouldn't be surprised to see an AR draft at some yes. point as well. <laughs> yeah, that's one I haven't touched, but it does touch a large uh, number of, uh, APIs in the system. And uh, that's an interesting aspect of Marzipan too. Will it ship with support for 100% of the APIs right. in iOS? I don't know. Um, it I'm makes sense that you'd keep doing a standard desktop version for even, you know, for those who haven't upgraded to the next uh, Mac OS. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe there'll come a time that I'll ship both. Maybe some right. people would prefer the Marzipan experience on their Mac and some people would prefer the more traditional Mac uh, version. I was thrilled when you added uh, Mac support. Uh, in, in fact, it was what encouraged me to subscribe to the pro version so I could use it right away. Uh, now it's now it's out of beta and available to everybody. But it really, right, I like having a desktop uh I want all. I want everywhere I am. I want to be able to look at my drafts and add to the drafts. Yeah, absolutely. That's our goal. It's yeah. taken us a while to get there, yeah. and there's you know lots of improvements coming. The actions aren't on the Mac version yet, but we're working on that. And hopefully by this fall, we we're, we're shipping you know a fully capable version. So the things that Apple will announce on uh, on Monday and all next week uh, are going to be fairly important to you. Are you going to WWDC? 
I'm not going. And amazingly enough, I've only ever been to one WWDC and it was 20 years ago. Wow. Uh, and you, you'd think I would want to go back because Steve Jobs gave me a laptop at that. Oh, WWDC. nice. How, but, why did he give you a laptop? Um, well, that was 99, 20 years ago. And the, the big hardware announcement at the keynote that time was a new PowerBook G3. It was the bronze keyboard model, if yep. you remember that. Oh, yeah. It's kind of one of the last of the black power books before the titanium book came around. And to promote that during the course of the week, they gave away 40 of them, one every hour. And they gave away two during the keynote. And literally they pulled the big raffle cage out and spun it around (laughs) and Steve opened the door. And I was one of the names called during the keynote. Um, Very nice. Very fancy. So that was that was fun. Yeah. He didn't actually literally hand me a laptop. It arrived in the mail six weeks later. But. Oh. oh. I see your 3D printer behind you, and I also see something that looks like you might have 3D printed. That big turtle is actually ceramic, if that's oh, okay. what you're looking. Yeah, I'm looking at the turtle. Uh, that little one. That, there you go. That's, uh, some Gloomhaven game pieces. Oh, nice. <laughs> so you is this a hobby, the 3D printing for you? Um, honestly, it's been more of a frustration than yes. a hobby. <laughs> Join the club. <laughs> okay. But, you know, it's fun to watch it come out good halfway through and then die two hours into a print. Oh. <laughs> I know you're, but it's uh, been fun to play with over oh. the years. My sons have enjoyed it as well. Do they play Gloomhaven? Is that why you play Gloomhaven or did it, or did you do it first? Uh, we got it at Christmas kind of as a group thing. And I've mostly played with my three sons, um, on a campaign it's a it's a great game it's a long game as i remember <laughs> yeah it is a two to three hour commitment to play a yikes. play around Gloomhaven. yikes uh i know we met on twitter discussing our kids robotics uh Funny. tournaments uh are you also into robotics or just as a, a dad of um my sons are to some extent and they mostly got into it uh Uh, doing robotics teams and doing a program called Destination Imagination, which is kind of an all over the map program. And they kind of taught themselves Arduino and um, do a lot of stuff. So they're they're geeks following in dad's footsteps, it sounds like. Absolutely. (laughs) (laughs) How old are they? Um, I've got twins that are juniors in high school and I've got a sixth grader. Sounds sounds like somebody I know. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we asked James Thompson this last week of PCALC, and I want to ask you too, do you ever, I mean, as drafts becomes more popular, more people are using it, do you ever fear you're going to be sitting um, watching the stream of the WWDC co- keynote and they're going to announce something that <laughs> you is could get exactly Sherlock. like, <laughs> do you ever fear being Sherlock? Um, a little bit, but not too much. I I also, one of my earlier, more successful apps prior to drafts was a dictionary app called Terminology. And I kind of went through that because when I developed it, there was no system dictionary in iOS. um, And they added that, I think, in iOS 3. um, And I was kind of like, "Uh (laughs) uh-oh, who's going to want to buy a dictionary app now? But I've seen over the years, the more of the Sherlocking, I think, sometimes helps the market. Um, It some of the features like say when read it later came to to safari the or you know reading list or whatever they call it i think that maybe helped things like pocket and instapaper because apple usually ships a 70 percent solution you know that's right. good for a lot of people but it also makes people aware of the idea of using their device for that kind of task and then they maybe go out and look for something better you know i don't think apple shipping a podcast app really hurt the market for third-party podcast apps. It just got more people listening to podcasts and more people saying, well, this one doesn't do that. And maybe they go look for a better app. Um, So I don't worry too much about stuff like that. You actually, I think they'll never, they would never do anything like drafts. The most, the closest thing they have to drafts is shortcuts. It's the only other kind of completely open, do what you want product they have. And it's hard enough for them to explain and get people to use shortcuts i don't think they'd had something as open as draft somehow it just doesn't seem right 